Hi, this is Randy Finney with the Right Side of the Chart, and this is an end of day, uh, actually not a closing market wrap. We'll get to the markets. I'm going to skip the, the usual broad market coverage uh, because really nothing much is going on. Uh, if I'm not putting you to sleep, I'm putting myself to sleep going over the same stuff every day. Now, as I said, that you know, from those periods of extreme low volatility and complacency, just when everyone thinks, okay, the market will never correct again, never have a big down. That's that's when it comes, but but that that low volatility can go on for a while. So at the end of the video, I'll update uh, NQ QQQ SPY time permitting. But let's uh, right now there there's really no money to be made in the market. Um, you know if you're day trading, you can if you're using a very high amount of leverage. There are you know bounces these breaks of support bounces off support level or breaks of support. You know in other words. The indexes are bouncing off technical levels, but very, very small bounces. So it's like um, squeezing blood from a, a stone, water from a rock, the same expressions, whether you're probably in the U.S. or U.K., uh, which basically is just, you know, it's, it's hard to do. So let's 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 look at some, some trade ideas. Start out here in the trading room. Uh, here's a, a post, an update. Somebody asked me to cover NG, and I plan to, so I'll get to that. And I also want to uh, show a few other things, some trade ideas we're looking at. And um, probably need to uh, do some you know, updates. I used to have us over here some uh, tutorials on the trading room, and, and I've got to get those back on there. Um, but uh, what I did is I just clicked on the swing trading group. I posted a few updates today, uh, this afternoon. So I'm going to go over those and share those ideas because they're potential trade ideas for everyone. Or in this case, we'll start out here with Home Depot. Uh, that was the last uh, post I made in the swing trading group. Uh, real quickly, I post. I was even considering retiring the other groups. I've mentioned this before, even precious metals, swing trading, because I, most everything is either a swing trade or a day trade idea. Um, in other words, I might post a setup on gold or GDX, and I can go in the uh, and the groups are mutually or yeah, they're they're mutually exclusive. So um, I can put that in the swing trading or precious metals group. I did do an update. I'm going to leave these on here for now. I just want to let you know you can follow them all subscribe if you're a gold member or uh, at the very least uh, you're automatically subscribed to swing trading and then if you're an active trader you can join the day trading group and you know I encourage options traders that's not my thing but uh, there's a group for you share ideas you know uh, options trading brokers uh, options trading strategies uh, or setups all right back to the charts um, Ben Mills asked for an update on Home Depot and uh, this was it. Uh, Home Depot. Uh, somebody asked for this one. It wasn't. Uh, I passed along in the trading room, I believe. It could have been on the front page, but I think this chart that was back. They're all time stamped down here. Time and date stamped. Uh, back on November 5th, had a breakdown from this nice wedge divergent high. You know, and this is you know these are the things I talk about more often than not. These divergent highs, when they're clean, you get a sell signal. Again, the divergence isn't the sell signal, it's the trend line break, like right there. You get these corrections. Wash, rinse, repeat. Simple stuff, right? So this one you broke down, you kicked back, back test, and it was headed down. And so I showed heading to this target, then this target, and then ultimately this trend line before a, a, probably a, a more meaningful bounce. You can also note, you can see some moving averages. I have the 200 uh, day simple moving average, a 200 day exponential, and they're right there, the red and the blue lines coming in. So you have a confluence of support. So that's, you know, two reasons. You know, I favor a bounce there because that's a lot of support. It's a trend line we haven't hit in a while. Uh, here, let me get to the updated charts. So that's what it looked like on November 5th. Uh, somebody asked me yesterday for an update and I uh, said, it, well, there it was. First target was hit. And I said, we then uh, we taken out, we'll see, we had broken below there, the 224, and that opened the door for the next target uh, around 219, and then the uptrend line. Again, that was yesterday, and then here it is today, uh, shortly before the close. Screenshotted this at 357, and uh, there it is. We hit that 218. And as I said, uh, you know, if you're in this one, that's why I'm updating it. Not a lot enough meat on the bone. I would not short it here. I, I can tell you that. In fact, if, um, you know, if anything, be ready for maybe a long trade if uh, the charts confirm if and when we uh, approach this uptrend line. Uh, There's just not enough meat on the bone. The risk reward is not uh, favorable to try to short that little last bit. We could. And as I said, we may get a bounce here. You know, reaction's likely. That doesn't mean we're going to get it. You know, the odds favor, especially since we didn't have one at that first target there. And, uh, you know, whether we bounce and how far probably depends on what the market does. But if we do bounce, 
224.26 was resistance, it was broken, and now that would become support. So this would be, right now I'll just say it, you know, if the market, unless the market were to go down hard tomorrow, I favor this bounce. So not a, not a bad time to cover, and I could still do that in after hour session. So that's Home Depot. Uh, let's see, what else did I post today? Here's a setup. Uh, somebody asked about crude, CL, and uh, I had looked at uh, CL this morning, uh, and that's crude futures. I'm going to show you USO and DWT as well. And it was up here somewhere running, and I thought it was a little too early, and I had intended to revisit it, and I'm glad I was bumped in the trading room uh, because I was eyeing this level. I had added this level, 58.67 to my chart. Uh, why did I add that level since the last update I made on crude? Well, I see a pretty decent support. I see a reaction from below right there, reaction from above, kind of traded around that level, another reaction there. It's not a hard support level, but it is, I'm sorry, resistance, but it is resistance nonetheless. And um, a couple other things I mentioned on there. Uh, you had a, a beautiful textbook looking. This is a bull flag pattern. Look those up if you're not familiar. Continuation patterns, three components. You have the first thing, a very sharp almost you know unidirectional move up uh, an impulsive move that's called the flagpole and then you set up in a consolidation period it takes the form of a flag and then you break out and to measure the target or for the pattern you take the distance length of your flagpole add it to the lowest point of the flag before it breaks out now I just eyeballed it maybe it would have been a hair higher but when you have resistance come into play if you know given the two and if the measured target was just say it let's say 59 i would prefer to take profits of 5867 and uh, you'd be surprised how often it's not always but how often these these technical patterns play out right around to their measured target and then reverse so uh you have that going for you for a, just a pullback trade i want to get to uh the chart of USO and DWT because there may be some some longer term swing trades coming soon. And then finally you have uh, I put a red line here. I don't even it doesn't matter the value. It just every security is different. So on my you know a lot of my charts I will set uh, overbought and oversold levels not at the standard 20 and 80 level, but where that particular security has extremes. And you can go back and say okay well uh, here's the extremes. I can see every time crude has gotten here it's been a good time to buy it. And uh, uh, you know, there you didn't, didn't had a little bounce, went on to go a little bit lower, put in positive divergence right there. I don't have it marked, then went up. So, and that's again the buy point there. There was your last buy trigger, and I think I pointed that out the other day too. Thirteen ten, I missed it. I was watching it, and then later in the day I did an update and said, well, too late, guys. You know, I missed the objective entry. And there was certainly more to be made on it, but again, I didn't want to chase it there. That's just me. So now. Where am I going? We've come full circle. Now we hit a comparable level. And let me clear out all those lines where um, uh, every time the RSI 9 on the 60 minute chart has hit this level, there you had a slightly higher high. You put in a divergent high. See that little divergent? And then the correction came. Uh, we hit it again here when that was a one and done. Um, yeah, right there, that was the high when we hit that level. And then this followed. Uh, again, we didn't hit that level to until right now, actually. So, so either way, it's extreme. And I always say this: overbought is not a sell signal because sometimes you do go higher and then uh, maybe get a divergent high, and then the bottom comes. But usually, it's very limited. Usually, very limited. Um, however, I'm going to take this a little one step further now and just kind of pass along something that I factor in. So that's a 60-minute chart. And as I say, I try not to get lost in the world of the 60-minute charts. Uh, I try to keep an eye on the bigger picture. And here's USO on the daily chart. Um, you know, this is, these are all, you know, developments that were pointed out in the past. Uh, divergent high here, we had a correction. Divergent high, correction. And then a series, just like the stock market. It, you know, went up, we had a correction, went up again, correction, and yes, strong trend, went up again, but it was just a, simply an extension, three consecutive divergent highs, which really formed one larger uh, divergence, negative divergence there, you can see. And then finally, the bigger the divergence, usually the bigger the correction. Boom, and it came. And it came right here. I believe I pointed that out at the time. That minor trend line break was the golden, you know, short signal. I wish I could tell you I milked the whole thing down, but I got a good part of it. I recall that. And then right here we had a uh, divergent low, which is bullish. You know, same 
same thing but in reverse positive divergence at the low right there with strong divergence much much lower low in price uh, compared to these higher lows in, in the indicators and that was a catalyst for this rally and this rally ended with you got it overbought and a small but it didn't take much because it was a very steep sharp rally a divergent high your divergence line would be right here uh, versus these uh, these indicators making lower lows and then that was that so it's really wash rinse repeat stuff and uh, most recently and I am going somewhere with this by the way with this recent one uh, the short trade uh, it's unofficial by the way the uh, short setup I just shared with you because my convictions aren't very high and if anything it's just a quick pullback trade I try to keep the official ideas swing trades you know, that might last several weeks or more and ideally uh, you know double digits 10% or more gains ideally on most of those trades uh, but there we had a nice divergent low. Again, it was pointed out the time we went up there. And so now here's where I'm at. Here's where I'm going with this. So we had uh, that, that rally in crude today. Pretty strong rally, you know. Uh, and, and also on the back of a strong rally yesterday on the heels of that. Here we had, I'm not crazy about this trend line, but I think I need to point it out. There's one, two, uh, well, we would have had three. We kind of had three reactions because we had a failed breakout there and then a reaction there. And then so recently, if you look, if you give that trend line some validity, I would say it's not, it's certainly not the most valid or the strongest trend line uh, because of the violation there. But, um, you know, it, there are enough reaction points to, to, to note it and, and, and it may come into play. And it looks like it did. And when I zoom in, we broke above it, but uh, we had 1206 resistance. That's a pretty solid resistance level and uh, today we broke above that so therefore that's why I'm not my convictions aren't super high on crude uh, I took a shot at it when I made that post I'm not going to give it too much room I'll give it a little bit of room and uh, on here if USO pulls back and, and I'm giving you USO for you guys that uh, uh, don't use futures this I think is a likely target this is a daily chart so what I've done here is off the late September lows there's an uptrend line exclude that little candlestick uh, wick down there or the uh, tail I should say the bottom and you come in you'll capture a lot of uh, the candlesticks after that in the bottoms of them, either the bodies excuse me either the uh, bodies or the uh, and or the the shadows of the candle the skinny part so what I could see here is a pop above there, but again, for the reasons I just cited on the 60 minute, I think probably come back in, and then that would offer uh, quite likely, if the market holds up, crude is going to, right now, this, this lift has been due to the stock market rallying. When the stock market's rallying, it's because economic growth or future expectations are positive or bullish, and therefore, crude, you know, although it does have its own supply demand dynamics, it tends to ebb and flow with the overall stock market. You know, if expectations go down and we have recession fears, uh, usually you'll see crude oil drop uh, based on lower crude demand or expectations of lower crude demand in the future. Uh, but that's it. You can see again as I zoomed in there. So, you know, short it there. That pullback trade would be about, uh, and it comes in nice because it, you have triple intersecting support levels you have the back test of the downtrend line you have that uptrend line which I'd probably put a higher weighting on that uptrend line and then you have this 1165 uh, uh, support level right here and what does that give you that gives you about four yeah we'll call it about four percent and um, I know um, DWT uh, a lot of traders like to use DWT it's one of a couple of inverse or one of at least two inverse three time inverse um, ETN so if you want to short crude and you don't have a margin account and you want to do it say in your IRA or something or a non margin account you can buy DWT and I just wanted to share some levels so at minimum 442 it's pretty decent support if we get a little pullback you have positive divergence here on the 60 minute charts also so there could be a little bit more there and let me try to quantify it now remember you have to can take into consideration or factor in the three time leverage if you buy it you know, you have three times the gain potential of what crude's going to do, but you also have three times the loss potential. So ideally, you take one third less uh, if you're buying DWT than you would short USO. You might short $30,000 of USO, but that's comparable to buying 10000 of DWT because of the uh, three times leverage. Um, 
and that would be this is my preferred target right here you have a nice downtrend line you have price resistance there at uh, 477 uh, should this pan out and again you have your stops not too far below in case it doesn't screw could continue most certainly could continue to rally that's about a 12 12 and a half percent uh, gain uh, if and when we get there soon so there's a there's an unofficial trade idea and look it could morph into more because you have that again you have that divergent low I want to look at the USO chart again and so it might be something like this where it ultimately breaks out and that would be you know a bearish thing for crude so we look at the USO 60 minute chart yeah it's the same thing in reverse we flip it upside down except no leverage uh, there's your negative divergence lines on both the PPO RSI and so a target for USO if you want to just short and not use leverage uh, that that would be your target right here about 1162 plus the intersecting uptrend line and that would be about a 4.6 percent drop uh, all right that's USO okay and on a somewhat related note natural gas I've been you know post I go in and out of a security you know if gold is tradable at the time there are times or silver or you name it you know, pot stocks anything I, I might post frequent updates you know several a day or several a week and I might do that for weeks or months and then all of a sudden you'll you know, I just stop posting on natural gas it's because I don't you know there are times where natural gas will go into consolidation mode or or the charts aren't very clear and then I disengage and then I'll re-engage again so lately I've been trading this one um, and and uh, the vast majority of those trades have been winners. It's been very good to me in the last couple of months here. And I've shared almost you know most uh, of those trades, uh, if not all, on the site. So I wanted to show you. I want to add a line here and update it again. I you know I warned that the we had the inventory report today. I posted an update on the front page, and I said and I did follow up in a comment a question there. I didn't have the arrows on you gas, but I did have the arrows on NG, and I was trying to share my thoughts pretty clear that look the charts to me clearly seem constructive and bullish so I favored more upside and I still do uh, but I had to warn that hey, that inventory report every week is going to come out rain or shine whether you like it or not and it is just par for the course it is what happens when you trade natural gas uh, and it, this is probably the most if not one of the most volatile commodities out there very few commodities have such vol you know big price swings day to day swings week month the trends are powerful and um you know if you if you get the trades right uh it's very profitable to trade and like anything else if it's you know a little too volatile for your blood but you like it you want to take just use a very small position you know you, the gains in this thing are easily double digits in a day or a couple days often if you get the trend right you know you can do 20 30 percent in a couple of weeks or a month or so depends on how it's moving at the time but i just wanted to update this and say so far so good we have the inventory report out of the way the case for the last long trade is still intact which was this uh, divergent low right here positive divergence uh, i think i did mention on the post this morning if, if you're wondering if why my price levels resistance levels targets have changed because uh, the futures rolled at least on this you know interactive brokers uh, we're now on the January contract so I had to rep you know redo all the chart levels the last one even though they use a continuous I chart usually the continuous futures uh, but they did roll uh, at least on their charting program they're considering now the continuous as a January contract I want to say that uh, TD Ameritrade they do you can get free real-time futures as well there if you have a brokerage account but they usually uh, take a few more days to roll theirs at least on the chart so when you type in forward slash ng on TD Ameritrade thinkorswim platform for example if you do it right now I think you're gonna get the um, still get the December contract I just wanted to point that out so if you're going driving yourself crazy is hey well I have my lines right where he does all the same there's a gap there there's a reaction why are the prices different that's that's why it's so always check to see uh, what what futures contract all right so that's it it looks good uh, doesn't mean it'll plan, pan out but if you're in it um, you know just uh, set your stops wherever you entered it doesn't matter where I entered or anybody else uh, so far we have the early makings of an uptrend following that divergent low and uh, so uh, and we took out that uh, two uh, 0.625 level and so hopefully or ideally I expect natural gas to come up here at least at least to that 260 uh, about 270 level and right now let's just say this is my preferred swing target right here uh, zone that big old gap right here and uh, let's look at you gas for you uh, you gas and again I posted this the other day 
I might not always follow up with each of these charts. It takes a long time to update these. But you can go in the site and just look at the last chart. Uh, I, I think I might have tweaked some of these levels on the one that I posted. This, these are the same levels I posted this morning. And you can see, although UGAS is going to look a little bit different from NG, because NG is trading around the clock, whereas UGAS is these are 9.30 to 4 p.m. trades. But you can see the same basic premise there. You have a divergent low. If it goes a little bit lower, I'll have to reconcile that. Sometimes these levels don't line up because uh, these natural gas tracking ETNs do not do a perfect job of tracking the futures. They have expenses. They roll different futures at different times. And um, there's a level. Might have a downtrend work in there as well, which could trigger, you know, um, uh, an even larger move but uh, the comparable levels there's that big old gap that I was just showing you on NG so really this is my uh, target zone um, there's also resistance right in the middle and to try to quantify it so if uh, from here if it, and or you gas continues to move up and remember there's three time leverage in it you're talking 16 percent to that target let's say that's my minimum per swing target that is my next target here where you might get a reaction if you hit it maybe that's the end of the run that's how it works but if you take that out that opens the door to the next one and I favor a move up there at least that's about a 17 percent gain next stop there in the midpoints about a 24 percent gain from where we are today and then about a 35 percent gain and again that's where we are today I pointed this out the other day so it's been up it's moved up a little since then uh, let's just go back to some of the uh, swing trading group again I clicked on swing trading group so these are just the things I posted today I had a couple questions and I'll just share this for everybody um, Jim asked about uh, CGC uh, I mentioned yesterday I believe I did in a video uh, two days ago I mentioned um, taking a position in ACB Aurora Cannabis and also highlighting the fact that uh, most of the canopy, uh, cannabis stocks were at or very near coming down to uh, pretty good resistance levels while in what appeared to be a selling climax and so far I think I can say at least with pretty good confidence you know that was the case here's CGC these things have exploded that was uh, you know that's when I posted just the other day right here and um, so I just wanted to mention well here let me pull the live chart uh, in case you're trading these uh, CGC is canopy growth uh, these are the US shares here you can also all well, most of these are Canadian companies so you can now have a different ticker dot to for the Toronto exchange uh, so that's it look at the big big volume off there and just in just in the last three days um, wish I could tell you I took more than ACB um, unfortunately I didn't um, I was out the next day and um, and anyways, uh, miss that's a 52% gain in just two days. Uh, yeah, well, three days off the bottom right there. 52% gain and, you know, coming up now, but it's coming up on resistance. Now, you get an initial bounce. I, I think the bulk of the runs over. I would not buy these here right now. I'll just be very clear on that. But if you're in, I'm showing your targets. And now, look, they may, after a pullback, now they could just keep ripping, but odds are you're going to get a pullback here and then uh, start looking for, uh, you know, uh, support levels like these gaps here. Uh, those are certainly natural supports. And I think on this one, for example, 18 would be a good level, right about 18. I see good support there. And maybe, uh, you know, so you get some profit taking, usually after a 50% run. Uh, these guys can keep running but especially after they've been in a bear market and this is a lot of short covering and uh, bargain hunters stepping in so you'll probably get a, a pullback my guess tomorrow even if they pop first and uh, so at the very least you can do what I did now I did it yesterday I trailed stops and I did it on purpose I put them very tight knowing that I would probably get stopped out and was uh, right as I right after I started yesterday's video I did I had a stop right here you know I still took it for I'm not complaining it's part of the game but uh, I still got you know I forget what it was about 20 25 percent out of that one but look it went up today another 18 percent actually uh, quite a bit higher at the highs this thing was up another uh, what is that 22 23 percent gave up a little of that and it still has like I, I think I said before I could see it going up here to 350 uh, so my plan was and you may do the same thing now is what I'm saying is you know if you're in it set a stop and let it run because they these guys can keep going um, but I can tell you if ACB if I was still in it and it hit 350 I'd probably take at least half profits and if it got all the way up to 390 I'd, I'd, I'd be out and I can see it going up here but I just don't see it going straight up there uh, this may just be a dead cap bounce bear market it's all we can say right now is a bear market rally but a dead cap bounce is that's it and then you go back down so I just wanted to update the levels for those of you that took it 
uh, or any of these. And um, the other one was, uh, okay, I'll, I'll get back to that one in a second. Cron. Somebody asked about Cron. And there's my chart on Cron. You can see here. Uh, that was the one I posted in the trading room. It needs to take out. So it's in this price channel. This one's also moved up sharply. That was a chart I posted a little, a little earlier today. But let me just give you that one. Uh, for those of you in the pot stocks, nope, that's corn, C-R-O-N. Got a little dyslexia thing going here today. Here we go. Uh, boom, right up to that trend line, plus 774. That's a lot. Like, here's a stock. Had I taken that one the other day, I would have had a sell limit order at 774. That's a momentum-fueled overshoot past the resistance, perfect kiss of the downtrend line, and it pulled back to park right below that level. Um, so it could certainly break out, and if it does, here's additional upside potential targets. But I think tomorrow, even if they pop in the morning, I think we'll probably get that first wave of profit taking, and then there there'll probably be another bounce up. Usually, you don't just get a one and done. Usually, you may get an ABC correction there. So uh, we'll keep an eye on those. I'm not putting these as official trades. They're just too risk, too aggressive. Any stock that can run up 50% in three days can drop that much in three days as well. Um, you got to be careful when you play these things. And, you know, I can even, looking at the chart of Cron, it never hit. And I can just tell you, usually when a stock comes this close to a pretty well-defined support level like this, it, it's like a magnet. It's going to hit that. So this, I wouldn't be surprised to see heavy profit taking. So you've got to be careful if you're playing that little, you know, if there is a pullback tomorrow. I, I, I would almost put good odds on this. It's almost too easy, although it happened quick. It left a lot of people out. But this is where I, I just would let you know I'd be interested in buying Cron if it pulls back to five, if it gets down here. And that'd be a pretty healthy drop. You know, it's at 762 now from today's highs. That would be another 32% drop. Um, but if the charts were constructive, not just Cron, but also MJ, I mentioned that one the other day too. You know, this is the ETF, You're a little safer play because you're diversified, but it's still up, you know, about 20% or 19% or so at today's highs, gave a little of that out. Constructive chart, this is a common theme I'm seeing, these positive divergence, divergent lows, uh, that selling climax, and, um, you know, this one could work its way up here uh, to the downtrend line of the 2316 level. Uh, I'm just n not sure if we're not going to get another leg down to just shake these people out and then uh, get that rally, or maybe even not that. Maybe it's just a bear market rally that's going to be over a dead cap bounce. So like I said, I'll watch them. I just don't have the highest convictions. And like I said, if I had to guess, I would say within the next day or two, we're going to get a pretty healthy pullback. And it could be relatively healthy, little, you know, 30, 50% retracement, 32 minor retracement, or it could be one more jog down, and then maybe there'll be a buying up for the uh, pot stocks. And if so, I'll, I'll try to point that out if I see it. Okay, I also posted an update. Somebody asked about gold in the trading room. Uh, my convictions aren't high, but I'll give you an update on it uh, right now. We this, These are gold futures. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit, 60-minute chart. So I have this uptrend line, which we've fallen to, and um, I'm leaning towards a bounce off here. We did just put in a divergent high, but this one came right on the heels of divergent low, and usually you can get both and both could play out but uh, here's what I'm favoring but it is highly contingent not exclusive but but highly contingent on what the broad market does the broad market breaks those supports that I've been highlighting and I'll get to those in a second again on the 60 minute charts um, then uh, gold will probably get another leg up even if it dips below there briefly and uh, that would be the next target about 1480 and uh, I think up here to this yellow line I think that's a pretty safe bet uh, again, and maybe even more, it depends if the market, uh, uh, what the market does, because if the market continues, if it holds up here, it hasn't been rallying this week, it's down a little over the last couple of days, but, but not much. Um, more so it's correcting in, 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 in price than in time, it's down again slightly, but so here's some targets. There's that downtrend line. I just extended that for you, and it comes in right around that 1492, which was a big level in the past. It started to get chopped through, but I think it's still going to be a big level. And so if you're looking for a uh, you know a target, that's what. And we could break out if the market 
kept going down more than most people think, more uh, well beyond my minimum, my preferred you know pullback targets now, that 3 4% or so drop I'm looking at, then I think we'd see something like this. I still think we'd get a reaction there, but we could go on to break out. So we'll, we'll watch this. And again, I doubt this is going to happen if the stock market continues to new highs. Um, if the stock market has a Santa Claus rally, December strong, the rest of January is strong, uh, I really doubt we'll see this. We'll probably see it break down and see something like this. So, uh, but I just want to say, you know, it's not bad here. I can't give it a hard buy, but uh, uh, there's a level that, and it's not a, it's only three reactions, not a very solid trend line, but one that may come into play. So we'll watch this. And again, I'm leaning that way, but we're going to need to see the equity markets break down and let's get to those. We'll wrap up here. NQ, here's that uh, same chart I posted this morning. Zoom in. Uh, we broke down, but we kept snapping back above uh, that level, and we are back. We ended up back testing it from below all day. This is that little wedge I posted this morning in pre-market, and um, so you can say, well, there's a red candle below 82.66. Randy, why didn't you know? Why didn't we go down? Uh, well, here's why we didn't go down. Here's those trend lines that I posted on ES yesterday, and I've been posting the last few days, I believe. Uh, intersecting uptrend lines which are acting have been acting as a support and that's where we bounced yesterday on one two three what is that like four or more candles and again we hit it today so NQ started to break down but guess what the spy traders were buying support they didn't let the spy drop so it sucked NQ back up because remember they have their two different indexes but their 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 largest holdings are largely not exclusively but largely the same holdings they're chock full of Apple and and Amazon and all those big companies there, the big fang stocks. So that's it. So we'll watch that. Uh, maybe the early makings of a downtrend line, which could spark the next, uh, you know, next wave of uh, buying. So we're kind of pinching between support and resistance. And based on those recent breakdowns on the daily chart, I favor a breakdown here in those targets being hit. But uh, you know, you got to give the bulls credit. They're 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 holding up. The buyers are not. You know, taking they're not selling, taking profits. The longs aren't, and the shorts I think are just they're retired. They're in hibernation. They're afraid to short this market, and that's evidenced by the very low volume. This market's moving up more so on just kind of a lack of selling, if anything else, it seems because very low buying. When you have very low volume, it doesn't take a lot of buying pressure to uh, raise stocks. But uh, so those are those are the levels we're watching on the um, broad markets and kind of how everything ties in. Oh, somebody asked me about KC. Uh, coffee futures, uh, yeah, it it you know it, it pulled back the other day. I haven't done an update, but you know it's still the longer term, intermediate term, longer term outlook is bullish. These are the 60 minute charts of KC coffee futures. Uh, I believe these levels were on the last chart that I posted. Nope, I just checked, and my last all the uh, recent 60 minute charts were all the December contracts. All my levels have changed, and I have to now you know reconcile those. Um, Interactive Brokers has rolled to the March contracts as the uh, continuous. Uh, what do I see here? I'm uh, getting a little stretched, a little bit overbought here. But that, you know, coffee, it's, when it's in an uptrend, overbought, it can shrug that off. But, it, you know, that's something to, to note. Uh, that line, you know, we're getting up there where, you know, pullbacks often uh, occur. And um, I want to call it divergence, but really almost equal highs. It's a little stretch. It used a lot of energy up. You can see we had a run here just like crew. We ran up, it bull flagged right there, perfect bull flag. There's an example where the flag, it was the measure target was exceeded. That was a little longer than the impulsive leg up or the flagpole, but that pretty much played out for that pattern. So it's taking a breather now. Um, you know, uh, again, this is more of a, and I, you know, the last one was an official trade. We had a couple before that. This one I've been highlighting since the get go from the bottom, about when coffee bottomed and doing updates. It's like I said, sometimes official, unofficial. If I like it, I'll, I'll highlight it. But I've highlighted this one more as a swing trade um, uh, in recent months, stating, you know, way back here that I was just pretty much targeting the same targets as the last official trade, which were back here, T1, T2, T3. So far we've hit uh, T1, well, we hit it right, oh, where did we go long last time? Right here, uh, went up, hit T2, had a pullback, a little reaction, and now we're powering back up. And when you just strip away everything, uh, you know, this is a pretty constructive chart. Uh, you see 
uh, you know, of course, the breakout, the bullish divergence, everything, you know, that was a reasoning behind the trade, you know, divergent low, positive divergence there. Uh, I had, a, I think, a, whatever the breakout was, the most recent one was, I think, right here, breakout back test. But more so, here's what I wanted to focus on right here. Um, so far, uh, you know, initial thrust up, as I said, usually you get at least a, you know, three wave. It's, it's just a corrective pattern, you know, within a larger downtrend. We are still, you can't say you're in a bull market or, or coffee's bottom. This is the downtrend, and you can go back farther and see you know, someone's been falling. I guess that's where the price history is going back. They they change. This used to be J-O, J-O-F-F, and then Barclays changed it to J-O. They retired the older versions of their um, uh, so if you go back on the site and you want to see my coffee, uh, all the trades back from 2012, 2013, 14, you're going to type in J-O-F-F, uh, I believe it is on the, or no, it was first, I'm, I'm digressing here, it was J-O originally, then they took it, you put it over the counter, J-O-F-F, I believe, and um, then they brought it back, this symbol Joe, so either way, you're going to find it under both of those. But what I was getting at is, uh, yeah, you know, even a you know an ABC corrective wave, and that's what we traded last time, A B C, and then you know we went down. So let's you know A B, uh, we'll get another thrust up, or but again, uh, put all those lines back on. The case for this one is even more bullish. You put in a double bottom right here, that's successful. You had divergence right there. You have divergence here, and then sooner or later, and I'll have to pull my chart of coffee futures, my long-term chart these commodities are going to bottom. They don't go to zero. That's the thing about commodities. They're not uh, WorldCom or, um, you know, any other, think of any other company that went bankrupt over the years um, because of, you know, either financial shenanigans like WorldCom and, uh, and some of the other ones, or um, they're just, maybe their business model no longer worked. You know, Xerox or what was a Polaroid was, you know, almost extinct. Um, and a lot of these companies when, you know, when digital, um, you know, cameras came out and digital photos. Uh, but my point here is commodities are always going to be, you're always going to, people are always going to be drinking coffee, at least for the foreseeable future in my lifetime and probably yours and your your kids and your grandkids. So therefore there is always going to be, um, you know, uh, you know, some, some, a bottom price or some tangible value for coffee, wheat, soybeans. In fact, you know, the world's just getting more populated and there's less and less arable land. So, you know, do the math at some point um, you know the supply and demand dynamics are going to shift on all these ag commodities and we're going to enter the next bull market and I plan to you know have a lot of core swing positions in these ag commodities and I've been mentioning that for a while now JJG you know it's uh, the grains ETF uh, it still hasn't really given us definitive evidence of a bottom but there's been trades to be made on that and then one day it will and one of these seemingly bear market rallies will turn out to be maybe it was this one the beginning of you know a mark a bottom you know a bottom with wave one up maybe wave two up and then we just keep going from there so uh right now i don't want to get off track here i don't have the levels marked up i don't know where all my price targets on jjg went um, but let's just stop the video here. Uh, let me see if I have any other ideas on my sheet. No, I mean, there's I've trade ideas galore, but these are the ones I wanted to go over. Really, I like to update these commodities that we trade actively in the broad markets and things like that. And uh, anything else that stands out, I will follow up tomorrow. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Have a great evening.